Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome back to another video where we're exploring sound design on the wonderful Korg Volker FM. So today we're going to talk about velocity. And let's start by defining what we mean by velocity in terms of uh, musical instruments and in particular synths. So I guess uh, in many ways, velocity on a keyboard instrument starts with the piano. Uh, the piano, or to give it its full name, the piano forte, which means loud and soft, was pretty much the first keyboard instrument where you could alter how loud or quiet the sound coming out of the instrument was simply by how hard or fast you struck the keys. Now, uh, it's not just about things uh, getting louder, of course. The harder you hit a key on a, a piano, uh, the more uh, harmonic content, the, the, the brighter the sound gets. So we're talking about how hard you're hitting the key governing how loud or quiet, and also how harmonically rich a sound is. Now, of course, these sort of concepts apply to most musical instruments. You know, if you blow into a saxophone harder, you get a different sound. It's louder and it's brighter. Uh, if you pluck a string on guitar harder, again, louder and brighter. Now, the way that we deal with this in uh, FM synths is that we're going to make um, our carriers react to velocity how hard you're hitting a key, and that's going to change the loudness and uh, softness of the sound. And then we can make our modulators react to how hard we hit the key, or the velocity of the key, uh, and that's going to govern the harmonic content. Now, before we go in to talk about how we actually do this inside the uh, patches, it won't have escaped your notice that, of course, the Volker FM doesn't have a real keyboard, per se. It has these contact points here for the keyboard. And I can tell you now, it doesn't matter how hard you slam your hand down on these contact points, that doesn't change the velocity of the notes. The way that the velocity is governed on the Volker FM is when you're outside of edit mode, so when you're in performance mode, if you like, um, this slider here basically sets the velocity of the notes that are playing. And that's kind of genius when you think about the Volker FM as a groove box where you've got a sequence playing back. It means that while the sequence is playing back, you can be altering that velocity and, and therefore, as long as the patch allows for it, altering the loudness and, and harmonic content of the sound. Now, there are some downsides with the way that velocity is currently implemented in the Volker FM, uh, but I'll discuss those briefly at the end of the video. Let's get into the sounds. So let's head into our edit menu. So um, at the moment, I'm running a patch in algorithm 12, which I'll just flash up on the screen so that you can remember what that looks like. Uh, but at the moment, only operators 1 and 2 are turned on. So at the moment, operator 1 is acting as the sole carrier, and operator 2 is acting as the sole modulator. So dealing with um, the velocity sensitivity of a operator is really, really straightforward. We're just going to scroll through our presets. It's over uh, near the end. Here we go. Yes, this KVS, or Keyboard Velocity Sensitivity. Now, uh, by default, in my initialized patches, they that's usually set to zero. And it goes from zero up to seven, seven being very sensitive, and zero being not sensitive at all. So at the moment, um, if we play a note, if we come out of edit mode, makes absolutely no difference where we have that velocity set. So if we come into here and we turn the velocity up on our carrier, now you'll be able to hear that velocity is essentially acting as a volume control for that carrier. It's maybe a bit too sensitive, so we'll just drop that down a little bit. Be around there. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so that's how we apply um, velocity sensitivity to a carrier. That gives us our volume control, essentially. I'm just going to turn that off for a second. So let's move over to operator 2, which is currently our sole modulator, and we'll turn the velocity sensitivity up on this, and we'll hear now that instead the velocity slider is going to govern the harmonic content. So that's kind of more or less a sine wave. like that. And of course you could combine those two ideas, so maybe we'll just make this one slightly sensitive. Yeah. 
So that's a really basic way of dealing with it. And this kind of works if you want to have your bass lines that do that sort of kind of thing. That's that's a really neat way of doing that. So um, let's just take a look at some of the other operators in um, in this algorithm, algorithm 12. So I'm just going to, do you know what? I'm going to turn off one and two, and I'm going to turn on three, four, five, and six. And we've got this kind of bell thing going on. Uh, if you remember from the algorithm video when we were discussing uh, this particular algorithm, um, what we've got here are several modulators all hitting one carrier, and those modulators are all detuned um, so that we're getting this awesome bell sound. Now what's quite interesting here is that if we head over to our keyboard velocity, can't find it, compassed it, uh, keyboard velocity sensitivity, we've got these three modulators now, and they're all kind of detuned. So what we can do here is set them all at different levels of sensitivity and they're all going to kind of fade in at different times and we're going to get a much richer idea as we turn up our velocity check this out quite a nice bell sound as we turn it up it's not just that we're getting more harmonics but we're also getting more here there we get more atonal frequencies coming in one thing that is worth noting with the keyboard uh, velocity sensitivity control is that it can send the operator level higher than the maximum operator level, which is why here we're getting more sort of distortion than we would have had if we had turned these all off because actually our operators are actually getting louder, getting a higher level than they would have done without the sensitivity turn on. So if you want to push a patch even further over the top, then you can actually do that. And of course this is, as I mentioned, really cool if you're doing a... Uh, so let's turn our velocity sensitivity back on. performance being able to bring these sort of elements in. Neat. So I mentioned that I wanted to talk about um, a downside of the way that this particular feature is implemented on the Volcro FM because I think it's worth addressing. Um, so because they're using this slider for velocity, um, what they've essentially done in the engine is they've turned off the fact that this will actually react to genuine keyboard velocity. So if you plug a MIDI cable in and you want to play the Volker FM with a proper keyboard, you don't get any velocity sensitivity, which I think I, it's a shame that, that it was worked out that way. I understand why they did it that way, but I think it's possibly an opportunity missed. Um, so I just wanted to mention that there is a special MIDI cable available from a company I think are called RetroKits. I'll put a link in the description of the video um, that when you plug a keyboard into the Volker FM using a special MIDI cable, it's an active MIDI cable and it does some um, magic along the wire and it basically puts uh, the right signals in for the Volker FM to react to it. So if you want to play your Volker FM with a proper keyboard, with proper vol um, velocity sensitivity, you can do that. You do have to buy uh, this cable or one similar. I don't own one yet. I do intend to pick one up, um, so I can't vouch for it personally, but I've seen plenty of people talk about them. They seem very happy with them. So uh, that's it for velocity. It's it's very straightforward, but it can add a, a, a whole extra dimension to your patches. So it's definitely worth experimenting with that feature. I hope that was interesting and useful. If it was, make sure you hit the thumbs and subscribe if you don't already. Um, in the next video, um, I am, against my better judgment, I think in some ways, going to tackle probably one of the least understood elements of 
uh, programming patches on the Volker FM, and that's the oscillator scaling. Uh, if you guys have got the uh, little card at home, uh, you've probably seen this terrifying looking graph thing over here. We're going to make sense of that. It really isn't as terrifying as it looks, um, and it can, like velocity, really open up what is possible when you're programming patches. So um, check back in uh, a few days for that video. Until then, thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will see you again soon. Take care.